a little bit of accordance. Well, you heard it from Zoom. <laughs> Okay, welcome everybody to the first ever Parasteam Hydrotherapist panel for Steam Awareness Week. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, so I don't talk about Parasteam Hydrotherapy enough, but Parasteam Hydrotherapy is my second certification that I do. Okay, one second, it's ringing at me. Let me make sure everybody's in here. Um, I just got to make sure everybody's in here. It seems like there might be a couple people in the waiting room. Okay. No, everybody's here. <laughs> um, so I started working with people one-on-one -on -one, um, with steaming. And the way that I did it was that I... Um, I had a friend who was an acupuncturist and people started asking me about steaming and I would be like, what herbs do you think? And we would talk and we figure out what herbs they needed. And so I ha always had this form of steaming where it was very individualized when I worked with clients. And um, I didn't realize that it was a little bit complex, you know, because it was based on, you know, ac different constitutions. They're kind of different steam user types and they have different herbs that they need and so forth. And so when, um, when very early on, um, I learned that a lot of people want help, you know, so I was getting like 300 inquiries per day of people like, can you send me some herbs? Can you help? Can steaming work for this? You know, and so forth. And it was like so many people because um, somebody who I had given herbs, one of my clients and helped with um, her infections had written a blog about it. And then all of a sudden it was just tons of people were reaching out to me. And so I realized that I needed to train some practitioners. And so I, you know, gave, you know, a lecture and um, trained some practitioners. And, um, and then what I saw happening afterwards was that uh, it wasn't, I hadn't done a good enough job training the practitioners because they were giving like the wrong herbs to people, to the wrong users, you know? So then I was like, hmm, all right, let me go in a little bit more. And so I kind of created more of a program, you know, that was more depth and, um, and what I found was that a lot of people didn't actually want to go into the depth, you know, to learn all of the specifications. Um, welcome back, Natalie. A lot of people didn't want to really go into the depth about to learn all about traditional Chinese medicine and the different constitution types and the different, you know, all the different properties of herbs and all the different ways that you can formulate them. Um, a lot of folks were actually just wanted to start steaming, you know, and this was especially true, I think, for people who already had active spas um, and wanted to offer steaming as one of their services. Their clients were like, hey, can you offer steaming? And they were like, sure, let me go take a certification. And so because of that, I divided my program into the level one program, which is the facilitator training. The facilitator training is really designed for somebody who really just wants to be able to make sure it's safe for somebody to steam and make sure to get them the right herbs. It's not really designed to go into you know, everything about it. And so those are my, uh, my level one facilitators. And then I took all of the rest of that content and I put it into my level two program, which is my parasteam hydrotherapy program. So today we have several parasteam hydrotherapists here. Um, parasteam hydrotherapists go to, through a, I would call it a one to two year course of study <laughs> where they learn how to use steaming in every different situation you can imagine. So I actually wrote it out here, um, the different areas of training that parasteam hydrotherapists have in particular. So mind you, the facilitators absolutely are trained in herbs, are trained in contraindication sensitivities, and know how to steam safely. But the parasteam hydrotherapists do study in um, other areas um, more specific to steaming, um, well, then I have a list over here. Okay. Um, so it's an advanced level of training where they learn how to create custom steam plans for various situations. Um, and what they do is they learn what the imbalances are of that person. So some of the imbalances, for example, are uh, stagnation, blood deficiency, uterine fatigue, 
um, dampness, and so on. So they first do a level of analysis to figure out what the person's imbalances are. Um, and they create a steam plan tailored towards those imbalances in particular. Um, and they also study um, all of these different areas of training. So abnormal uterine bleeding, infections, endometriosis, period pain, absent periods, long cycles, short cycles, irregular cycles, surgery recover, surgery alternatives, fibroids, cysts, polyps, adhesions, menarche, um, which is the first period, early first period, late first period, um, labor preparation, overdue labor, postpartum recovery, pelvic organ prolapse, it, and I'm going on and on. This is why it is a very long program. Um, fistulas, hemorrhoids, rectum issues, fertility, pregnancy loss, pain during sex, um, sexual trauma recovery, menopause, and postmenopause. So that is the complete list of all of the different areas of training that these parasteam hydrotherapists have had to focus on and learn about. So when they work with clients, they are working with clients um, with a lot of knowledge um, just about women's health in general and then how to use steaming as a primary treatment tool for all of those different um, situations. Okay. So I want to introduce some parasteam hydrotherapists today. Um, we have, um, who do we have here? We have Melissa, we have Teresa Swan, who is one of the most recent people who just completed the parasteam hydrotherapist program. We have Melissa Hunter, sorry, Melissa, I didn't mean to tease you, who is one of the interns who is almost complete with the program. We have Natalie, Mironishina, sorry, Natalie, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Mironishina, <laughs> who is from the Ukraine and one of the only, uh, the only student I've had in my classes from the Ukraine. And we're so happy to have her here. She had to pause uh, for a time period because of the troubles that are happening over there and the assaults that are happening in the Ukraine, but she is back back on internet and I'm just so happy to see her and that <laughs> she's doing well. And she's been steaming people all through it, you guys, <laughs> all through it. Uh, steaming during war, it happens. <laughs> it's, still, it's still necessary, you know? Um, we have Chantal Blake who has been part of uh, the Steamy Chick Institute program for a long time, has done a lot of the upper level parasteam hydrotherapy courses and does parasteam hydrotherapist consultations. Um, and Diana, you're still not done. You're in the, she's not done, but she's done a lot of high level. She's not one of the panelists today, but I, I, I keep on looking at you and I'll be like, she's like almost gonna be one of the panelists. Um, oh yes. And then Akila Collins, who told me not to call on her first. <laughs> See, now I almost just forgot that you were here. <laughs> I was like, not Akila. Akila Collins, who, um, when I w uh, started um, working on my parasteam hydrotherapist program, all of the content, I started to refer all of my practitioners, over, sorry, all of my clients to Akila. So she has worked with hundreds, doing uh, parasteam hydrotherapist consultations with hundreds of clients um, and has a lot of experience with parasteam hydrotherapy. She ends up... Um, creating a lot of the, uh, I would say, creating a, a lot of the models for what works best. Okay, so um, what I would like to do today is to introduce you, I would like for us to be able to meet these parasteam hydrotherapists a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna ask each one of you guys to introduce yourself and just let us know like kind of what happened that led you to um, do this course of study um, and what's the, um, I guess, how long you've been studying um, parasteam hydrotherapy and whether or not you are um, finished with your course of study or whether or not you're still studying, are you working with people? Um, you know, just some some basics, and then we'll jump in a little bit further to hear from some of your case studies. Okay, so uh, I'll start with Teresa again. Hi, everybody. So glad to be here. 
her. Um, yeah, as Kelly mentioned, I recently graduated the Paris Magic Therapy Program, which I loved. Um, yeah, so I'm now offering global consultations. Um, I have all the herbal blends available globally. Um, and then locally near Nelson, BC, I have a home spa. It's a beautiful mermaid spa if you want to come on over and have your first steam session here um and also i sell saunas locally as well so yeah and i got into steaming about six years ago accidentally <laughs> i went to a massage therapy appointment and she had a steam set up and i thought hmm, sure never heard of this i'll try it looked into it then i contacted a practitioner and was squatting over a pot and I healed my cramps. <laughs> so <laughs> I was amazed. So I had to, you know, of course, share this wisdom with the world. It was incredible. Wow, that is incredible. And Teresa, did you tell, did you mention where you are located? I know, but I don't know. Yes. Yeah. So I'm in British Columbia, Canada, um, but I do offer global consultations. So wherever you are in the world, we can meet on Zoom. Oh my gosh, we're going to have to plan a trip to British Columbia to go to the Mermaid Spa. That sounds so fun. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Teresa. Okay, so we'll go to Melissa next. Well, hello, it's so great to be in circle or I guess grid with all of you on the Zoom situation. Um, so I discovered steaming thanks to Kimberly Ann Johnson's book, The Fourth Trimester. And that was five years ago. I read that book because I was a practicing birth and postpartum doula back then. And um, I was so exhausted from that work and entering perimenopause that I started dealing with really wild uh, uh, menstrual cycles myself that became quite disabling. And uh, so it's been a long journey for me through these classes. But I joined the program in 2019, and I I credit this course of study for me still having my will. And uh, I'm not not hit menopause yet, but wow, it's been a roller coaster. And um, and I thought I was going to do this more with postpartum families, and now I'm just learning like, oh, as I'm navigating perimenopause. I can help other people navigate this. And wow, by the time we get to our late 40s, so many of those seven imbalances can really stack up if we haven't been doing this self-care throughout our life cycle. And wow, I wish I knew about this when I was a teen, when I was in my 20s, 30s, 40s. So um, I kind of surprised myself in that I'm now working with people more around menstrual cycle balancing. And, and it is a range of ages. Um, I work with my teenage daughter and then I work with friends who are in their seventies. Um, but I'd say most people are in their twenties or thirties, um, you know, wanting to preserve their fertility, maybe dealing with fibroids, heavy bleeding. Unfortunately, I have a bit of a uh, specialty in the abnormal bleeding due to my own journey and have had to, um, navigate a lot myself, but then that helps me help other people navigate that. And it's, really satisfying to be able to turn my lemons into lemonade and then share that. Um, so I just thank you, Kelly, for all of the guidance and support over the years. And I've been working through the uh, case studies for the final practicum this year. And it's been so much fun to, to meet people. And I just do this all virtually through the telehealth calls and emails and chat messaging. And um, it's great to be able to help people all over the world just fine tune what they're doing or start a new practice. Yeah. Thank you so much, Melissa. You've been such a treasure. And also, um, yeah, sadly, Melissa, you know, herself deals with abnormal bleeding. And so she's really become a specialist in, you know, the different so anytime somebody has abnormal bleeding, I'm like, okay, I want to send you to Melissa. She's gonna, she's gonna, she's been able to. Um, it's like you, you're able to sample all of the things, or you're able to test it on yourself. And so you, 
a lot of times become a specialist in the area that you needed help yourself, you know? And so that's definitely one of Melissa's strong points, as well as everything. Melissa, you're strong in everything. It's wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, um, Chantal, would you uh, introduce yourself next? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so, okay, when did it first, first start? I think um, I first was, I first experienced vaginal steaming when I went for an RVGO abdominal massage. I was having recurring miscarriages after the birth of my first daughter. And I had remembered a gynecologist telling me that my uterus was tilted, but I never, the conversation never went any further. And so I said, I think um, some body work would be like the next step in my kind of womb wellness. And so I, I found a massage practitioner. And prior to the massage, we, they, we would do a steam. And I heard of the idea before. Um, but after trying it, she said, you know, you have irregular periods, it would be it would help your periods come more regularly. And I did find that it was helpful in regulating my periods. I didn't have painful periods, but just irregularity was my most consistent um, challenge since adulthood. And, um, and so with my at home steaming smelling like a pizzeria, I was just grabbing whatever herbs I had in the house. And then at some point, I started to hear podcasts where Kelly was featured and realized how much more steaming can do and is doing for women. And I was like, I, I want to offer this something so simple, and so effective, I want to be able to offer this to women. And so I certified in 2019 and shortly thereafter, I was like, I need to learn more. <laughs> you know, this is not enough. There's, there's so much more to learn. So I remember enrolling like semester by semester and working through all of the content. And then I took a pause to finish a book, uh, my book, Peaceful Periods, Holistic Womb Care for Teens, which introduces young women, introduces teens to vaginal steaming as a self-care tool. So I would say, if anything, my, my focus has been on... Um, Monarch and um, young women, uh, definitely a lot of birth work, postpartum care as well. But yeah, right now my my goal is to introduce this book to our community, so it's a resource for us as practitioners and for parents and guardians and educators. And then my intention is to finish up, wrap up my training <laughs> as soon as possible. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, thank you for mentioning the book, Chantal. So um, on Wednesday, Chantal will be doing um, some reading from the book so that we can hear it. Um, I've had a chance to see um, see some of it, see like a, a early on version of the book. And um, although I haven't seen the finished the finished one yet, but uh, the book launch is actually this week. And it's incredible. Chantal's brilliant. She noticed that there are some books for puberty and then there's books for, you know, I guess, period balancing and stuff, you know, that are geared more towards 20, 30 and 40 year olds, but there's nothing for teenagers. And so um, she wrote a book um, to fill that gap and really educate teenagers about their periods and about, you know, what the different signs of their periods mean and introduce, you know, steaming to them. Um, just really, really incredible resource. Um, I just can't wait to get my hands on it <laughs> and give it to all of my, all of my teenage, you know, nieces. So, um, so okay, yes. So stay tuned to that, everybody. On Wednesday, Chantal will be reading from her book. Um, okay, great. So Cynthia, would you introduce yourself? Also, we're not saying where. Uh, sorry, we should be saying where everybody is. Melissa is in Fresno, California. And Chantal is right now in Senegal, isn't it? Yes. And that's another thing I've been working on is figuring out local herbs that I can use for steaming. So I've been having a, a bit of a research project with herbalist friends. So that's another learning curve for me. I've been here for a year and a half now. Nice. Nice. All right. So now we're headed over to Cynthia. Um, hello, everyone. So um, I got into steaming back in 2018. And my main reason was um, PMDD. So I don't know if anyone's ever dealt with that work with that. Um, but it always had been my issue. And I, you know, my backgrounds in wellness and fitness, and I always kind of did everything I could possibly do to be healthy. 
Um, but my cycle was always something that just really hamstrung me, you know, every month. And so finding, um, steaming and it, it brought my, and it would also cause my period to go missing. So I also had blood deficiency probably because of fitness and, you know, just, just not having as, as many calories as I would need, I guess, to, to make the blood. Um, so yeah, so I had that and I got down my 45 day cycle, which can you imagine, can you imagine, I mean, just to have PMS, PMDD or whatever for like, like 20 days, you know, it was rough every month. So it, it steaming finally, you know, brought my, um, cycle down to 29 days. And I still am just so shocked and amazed. And, and I've even gotten it now to be on, like to bleed on the new moon. And I'm like, eh, six it's incredible because it was just so many years so bad okay um so i found that i found you know steamy chick i did the facilitator and then i just was like this is life changing you know this is 100% like getting me out of you know really unhealthy unhappy life you know and be able to to get that taken care of and um so yeah i went into the parasitic hydrotherapy um you know, program and it's taken me a while. I mean, it's, you know, it's been up and down and, and because I really do believe this program, it is, it's such an evolutionary process. And as you go through it, you know, um, and so I think several times I needed to pause and be like, okay, whoa, you know, like I need to process some stuff. I need to figure some stuff out for, <laughs> for myself. Um, but yeah, I'm just absolutely, just charged by this, this work and wanting to get it out just as many, you know, women, girls as possible. And, um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm here to be part of the conversation. I do see clients. I am seeing clients. Um, and I have done, you know, I've done definitely done postpartum, but my most, you know, I'm interested in those folks who, you know, they have the cramps, they got the uterine fatigue, they got all of these things. Let's make you whole. Like I want to, you know, get okay, let's find out, you know, what, where, where you need a little bit more attention and focus and all that good stuff. So happy, so happy to be here. Thank you. So amazing, Cynthia. Yeah. You're such a blessing to the, to the steam world. I mean, I tell you guys, nobody believes in steaming like Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia is like steam. She's like, what's the problem? Let's steam. Like that's the solution. <laughs> Just like me, <laughs> just like me. I think all of us, we're like, oh my gosh, you get to certain levels, you're like, oh my gosh, the whole problem with the world is that people aren't steaming enough, <laughs> you know? These uteruses aren't healthy, that's why there's war, you know, like, <laughs> so. Um, okay, so uh, Natalie, will you do the honors of introducing yourself? Oh, Al Cynthia is in um, Arizona. Yeah, okay. Natalie. I'm from Kiev, from Ukraine. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I'm sorry for my English. <laughs> it's, it's, it's foreign language for me. So it's maybe some troubles with it. Uh, uh, I propose steaming for um, in, in my salon. I opened the uh, Yanni Steam Salon uh, here in Ukraine. We use this term because uh, vaginal steaming is not so popular, it's not so known. And uh, I I don't know how <laughs> I was able to find your site in, I believe it was 2018 when I was pregnant with my first uh, son and uh, I uh, heard this term of yoni steam for first time, and I knew that uh, vaginal steam is contraindicated for pregnancy. So I uh, waited for my postpartum period, and I uh, tried it for first time, and it was amazing. <laughs> there, there is no drama there, but. It was so much pleasurable. It's so much relaxing, smooth, and so on, so on. Uh, for first month, I believe I was steaming uh, while nursing. <laughs> it, it was me, a chair for the steaming, and my son on my breasts. And so, and. I was so relaxed. I was so happy, and my husband actually. <laughs> was uh, impressed and he proposed to uh, open the salon and to propose this uh, 
services of Yoni's team for women. He said, you have to tell all, all your friends, <laughs> all, all girls, all women, all uh, you know, all ladies to, to, to Steam. And now in uh in communities where I'm uh I attend, uh, I have uh, you know the, the second name of Natalia Yunis team. It's in every questions like like Cynthia tells that uh, do you have any advices for the team with the for the woman with a such problem or these moments uh, or these issues with uh, health health and I always <laughs> answer it's steaming. Steaming will help you. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I even uh, answer that you know what I will say. <laughs> it's it's your right. steam will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, um, last uh, February, uh, when the war starts here, I was on the uh, 34, I believe, 33 or 34 week of pregnancy or the second pregnancy and have to leave Kiev. And I gave birth in another town, but here in Ukraine. And I had to close uh, our uh, salon. Uh, uh, but, uh, and uh, I, I believe that uh, everything will stop. And uh, uh, nobody cares about steaming while uh, war is happening here. But uh, in I, I steamed uh, myself uh, for preparing for labor, and it was really my uh, you know it it anchoring me to, and uh, prepared mentally also that uh, everything will happen okay and my kids will be okay and uh, I recovered after birth with steaming and uh, I was uh, surprised when a woman asked for help and asked for advices uh, and uh, they really searching for some other ways to help the, themselves during the war and I understood that I have to finish uh, my study and I have to finish certification. So uh, I did it <laughs> and now I'm here. And uh, really uh, last, last winter we had uh, a, a lot of troubles with the internet. So uh, we, uh, we're unable to use even Zoom or Skype or, or something. Uh, sometimes we just text uh, or sometimes I email it with recommendations and so on. We we find the way how to uh, support women and it's a huge, su huge support for them. And I had a really uh, warm feedback and I have... Uh, a uh, small, I, I think a small community, about 100 of uh, home advice. It's uh, international from the uh, former Soviet countries. And uh, I informed them, I uh, give them a lot, a lot, uh, really, knowledge about steaming uh, with to help with conception, to help as a labor preparation, as a postpartum. And they uh, started to ask me about their own issues with cycles. And it was a big surprise for me that midwives have no uh, knowledge about healthy cycles. And there we are surprised about uh, the theming can help. Uh, it was some, it took me, I believe it's, Two, two, it took two years to, to, to them to believe me that it helps and uh, that uh, they have to try it because someone uh, thought that is something contact uh, that is vaginal massage or something and they just rejected no I will not go in this story but oh 
do uh, as they have more information have more knowledge about it they prize <laughs> on his team and they asked me where they have uh, to learn about it and i also refer to uh, steamy chick institute but there is a problem uh, uh as uh, there are a lot of people that don't know English, that don't speak English, don't understand it. So uh, it's very helpful that you made uh, it available in different languages, at least in as uh, titles to the videos. It's it's really helps, and I I believe that I I always say that I'm here not not the one but the first. <laughs> And I believe that it will be more and more practitioners and hydrotherapists here in our area. Well, Natalie, thank you so much. Also, your English is so much better than all of our Ukrainian. So, you know, <laughs> like, whoa, our Ukrainian is so bad. <laughs> so your English is like stellar <laughs> compared to that. Um, uh, it's such a touching story. You know, honestly, when I heard about the, the Ukraine, the war in the Ukraine, you were the first person I thought of. And uh, I was actually feeling so guilty that I didn't reach out to you. And so after like a year, you popped up and you were like, hello, Kelly, I don't know if you remember me, but I want to finish my, you know, study. <laughs> and I was like, no, I was like, oh my God, you're alive. And then to hear your case studies, you did, you just had to submit them because you had already been working with people throughout the war. I mean, it was just really incredible. Um, women are just so incredible, you guys, you know? And like, I mean, really, this is, uh, this practice, this practice has survived because of women in difficult situations, right? You know, being put in very difficult situations and yet we still have to birth, we still have to recover, we still have, you know, like our health still, uh, we still have these tools. And I think if anything, it really shows why it's important to, to know how to be able to steam at home with any supplies. You were moved away from your salon where you had, you know, your nice setup and, you know, all of your things, but you were able to, I'm sure, source materials, you know, where you were displaced in order to be able to steam. And I think that's, um, you know, honestly, that's how I feel about steaming. It's just like, this is a first aid, you know, like, um, this is a first aid treatment that everybody should know how to do, you know, when you should be able to, I, I think the, fir the, the first time that I, another time that I was thinking about that was when I heard about women who were steaming in prison. And I was just like, wow, you know, they were able to get a plastic bowl, get the guard to put some water in it and heat it in a microwave in order to be able to steam, you know? And so the, the situations that women steam in are just really incredible. And, um, and then uh, it's, you know, the, the triumph after is that it's so helpful, right? You know, it's able to get rid of the cramps or able to, you know, to get um, in, in prison, honestly, it was somebody who was steaming for labor. She was trying to relax enough to be able to, to, um, to give birth, you know, and she, and she was able to do it in time, you know? So it's just really, really quite a story. Um, so I think that's all I will say right now. Um, and I will pass it on over to Akila to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. And uh, Kelly, thanks for having us all here. This is awesome. It's so wonderful to be in the presence of other practitioners and hear their stories and hear how they're working and what they're doing and how they're helping women and what women are needing. So I really appreciate that. It's, in, it's inspiring and um, it feels good to be part of this community. So I think there's something special about 2018 because I also came to Steamy Chick in 2018, as did several other people here. Um, I was first introduced to steaming by a friend who was staying in my town to become a midwife. And so she stayed with us for a couple of weeks. And on the last week, she said, I wanna offer you something special as a thank you. And she set up this, she kind of kept me out of my living room. And then she set up this steam for me and uh, explained what it was. And I was like, wow, I've never heard of this before. And um, 
and it, it, it sort of changed my life in a way that I realized I want to know more about this. How does this work? What does this do? I'm all for whatever women, especially, but people in general can do at home to help themselves um, health wise. And so um, she explained to me what it was and how it worked and, and whatnot, but she didn't really give a lot of details. Uh, a week later, I saw a friend of mine posting about steaming. And of course, it's like when you buy a car, everybody has that car. So you start noticing stuff. So I started noticing people talking about steaming that I hadn't noticed before. And I reached out to her and said, you know, how did you learn about steaming? And she get, sent me the link, steamychick.com. And that friend was Monisha Garner. She's yes. a friend of mine who's a colon hydrotherapist and a uh, steam practitioner as well through Kelly, through Steamy Chick. And um, so I trusted her and I trusted the woman who had done the steam with me. And so I went to Steamy Chick and I, I was just, um, I knew that this was something I was going to do. So I started becoming, you know, working on the facilitator training. And somewhere along the line, I asked Kelly if she needed help with anything. And we ended up partnering and I've been working with Steamy Chick um, as a consultant for the last, I, since 2019, I think it was, or 18, I'm not sure. So I love steaming initially because it helped me with um, menopause symptoms. I had a hysterectomy, hysterectomy at an early age and um, hadn't really had any problems until I got a couple of decades past that. And then all of a sudden my hormones started just tanking. And I started having a lot of symptoms like dryness, vaginal dryness, and um, just like, you know, lack of libido and um, skin dryness. That was another big one. And so I started steaming. And one of the things I realized was that the dryness went away. And I had tried every product, everything, and steaming was the only thing that changed the vaginal um, condition over time and, and, and stayed that way. So I was really interested in that and how many other women I know are out there in menopause who are struggling and, you know, trying all of the things that are advertised on television, trying all of the pharmaceutical things, um, and just not getting anywhere. So I was excited to be able to offer that to steaming to women who were in menopause. I'm also a doula um, by trade and have been a doula for about 12 years, I think, when I came to steaming. And so I was also looking for a way to sort of transition away from being at births. And steaming offered me the opportunity to work with women in labor prep, postpartum recovery, and what I call postpartum maintenance, which is like that next, that whole year after giving birth. And then also something that is really needed, but not often supported, which is pregnancy loss. So um, I've been able to continue working with pregnant women, but not in the birth capacity, but in pregnancy and postpartum. And that was really um, so beneficial for me because it was it allowed me to sort of not be gone away from home for so long, which is what happens when you're at births. After my mom had passed away, um, I just realized I didn't want to go back to doing that. I had kind of tapered down as a doula because I, I was my mom's primary caregiver. So afterwards, I, I thought I would want to go back to like full-time doula work, but I really didn't. I wanted to have my time as my own again. I think it was just a result of being a caregiver for so long. So steaming gave me a way to do that, to still work with pregnant women, to still work in an environment that I'm passionate about, but not have to be at births. And I've worked with many women from fertility to labor prep, uh, postpartum, and then also pregnancy loss. I think the pregnancy loss cases are probably my favorite because they're the least supported. And um, there's so much need for women to get support, especially now that hospitals just give women the misoprostol and send them home to miscarry alone. Um, there's, they have no one to help them. No one in their immediate circle knows what to do, how to help them. So as a, as a STEAM practitioner, as a parasteam hydrotherapist, I'm glad to be able to be able to be in that space. And then of course, menopause is my, is my subject that I love to talk about and to work with women on. Often um, women over 55 are forgotten 
especially as they're no longer bleeding anymore. There's just this assumption that they don't have um, uterine or reproductive issues or vaginal problems, and they do. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I live in Portland, Oregon, but I also work like most of the other parasitine hydrotherapists by Zoom. So I've worked with people all over the world. Wow, thank you so much, Akila. I, I do want to say also, um, I love uh, sending people to you who are um, pre-hysterectomy. Um, Akila helped work with um, a couple, se several people who had decided that they were going to do a hysterectomy, and Akila was able to work with them before um, and then after um, for recovery. And it was really, um, it was really sweet because Akila herself had had a hysterectomy. And so then they were able to feel like not judged, you know, and <laughs> just that safety, you know, and be able to have that, you know, recovery. Um, so it was, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. I, I think all of the different areas of specialty that we end up having. Yeah. But um, yeah, we have our birth workers, Akila, Melissa, and Natalie. Um, and then, okay, I actually, there is another parasitic hydrotherapist here. Um, who is, I think, one assignment away from graduating, who's Angela Casanova. And she's been active in the chats because she's saying that her camera is broken. I wonder if, Angela, if you're just camera shy, <laughs> but I will read her introduction. Um, also, if you want to come on with your voice, Angela, we I think we can test and see if we can hear you. But she's also saying her English isn't very good. But um, Angela is in Germany. Correct, Angela? Correct me if I'm wrong. And she says, unfortunately, my camera is broken and my English isn't that good. Um, sorry, I lost it. I started my training in 2021. I'm almost finished now. Sorry, this chat always jumps around for me. Um, I'm only missing a few case studies, for example, sexual trauma. I am a naturopath, herbalist, and masseuse. I work in a spa. Okay, sorry. Um, floating center and vaginal steams and do vaginal steams there. And I've already been able to accompany a few women. A carpenter in my town makes steam saunas for me, which I sell. My goal over the next few months is to contact the gynecologists and midwives here in my city. So um, Angela also contributed that she heard about steaming for the first time in 2018 and tried it straight away because of her endometriosis and it was love at first sight. And um, somebody asked, uh, asked her to share more about steaming and endometriosis. And she said, thanks to TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, and of course, intensive steaming, I am completely free of symptoms and now love my cycle very much. I go to the gynecologist once a year for an ultrasound check. Otherwise, steaming was my medicine. Yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. Well, Angela, if you ever come on, we would love to hear your voice. If not, we'll, I'll just keep on reading what you're saying in the chat because you've got a lot of good stuff there. Okay, so I would like to um, ask the Parasteam hydrotherapists now um, to let people know what kind of clients you work with. And I would love it if you all could share a case study, um, a, like one of your clients, you know, one of your clients that you worked with that you had, you know, it, it just as an example of the, the way that you work with clients and what kind of outcomes that, um, that you get with those clients, what that looks like. So um, sometimes, uh, you know, you work with a client for 10 days, you know, and done like, for example, with the infections, and sometimes you work with them over a course of, you know, a couple of months. Um, but if you all could share maybe one of your favorite, um, favorite clients, um, or cases that you worked with and that could help give people a picture of um, what parasteam hydrotherapists do. That would be great. Um, okay, so I will go to Teresa first. Teresa, you always look at me with that smile. And I, I just, I just got to tell you. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so my background is as a trauma therapist and a women's counselor and an art therapist. And so when I'm doing sessions with people, I love to really do a lot of deep listening at the beginning, because I find like a lot of the times women don't have a place where they're like fully heard. 
in um, sharing, you know, their whole history of what's gone on. You know, we have short doctor's appointments, et cetera. So, yeah, so I think that's a really important part of our work is we're actually able to take the time and be present with people. Um, I love working with all types of clients, but I'm thinking like recently I've been loving doing fertility optimization with people. I think the results that we're seeing are just mind blowing. And I think we're kind of sitting on this like gold mine of wisdom. And I just want to like shout it from the mountaintops and say, wow, you know, maybe we don't need to be spending thousands and thousands of dollars on these fertility treatments. <laughs> like you know, we just need to steam. <laughs> so I, that's an area of passion for me because I, I, you know, think that that could help alleviate a lot of heartbreak in the world. Um, and also I love menstrual cycle issues. Um, so one of the case studies I'll share that was particularly satisfying is I had um, a young woman come to me and she had such terrible menstrual pain that she was unable to even stand up. She was vomiting. She was unable to do life for a few days every month. And, you know, we connected and she um, was dedicated to her steam practice. It took her three months and she was no longer nauseous. She no longer had cramps. And like she was able to, you know, continue with her life normally. And yeah, and she was in her early 20s. And I just think, oh, you know, I, I know a lot of us feel like, man, I wish I could have come to this wisdom and knowledge earlier in my life and how much it would have benefited me, you know, as a teenager. Um, so that's one of the ones that stands out for me. I had another client heal her endometriosis, which was just incredible. I had another client uh, last week who had a fibroid fallout. And that's the first time I've had that happen. <laughs> so, yeah. It happened. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So it's it's just all really exciting. Um, yeah, I, I, I just love working with people and women in particular. So... I just get a lot of satisfaction from, yeah, the concreteness of this um, modality. Like we get the results and it's just really exciting because as a counselor and a therapist, sometimes you're like, ooh, like how do we measure someone's progress? But helping women in this way just feels like you have so many wins. And so it's yeah. just, it's really satisfying. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. That's really cool to know. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, what was the other question? Sorry. No, you answered it. Um, oh. What I'm interested in, how long did you work with? I, and I remember that case with that young girl too, that really stood out to me. She was passing out and really nauseous every period. How, how many months did you end up working with her? Was it like three? Three months. Like it was amazing. Like <laughs> that she went from that to cramp free in three months, you know, and did you end up changing her steam plan like each month, each one of those months? Yeah, or yeah, we changed it once, I think, if I remember correctly. This was a couple of years ago, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And I'm just so, highlighting that for others, you know, just understanding the way parasteam hydrotherapists work with the clients is that they would reevaluate after every period. So, for example, Angela mentioned she did intense steaming. You know, she probably steamed daily for you know, for a month or so, you know, until it wasn't necessary to steam daily anymore, you know, you would cut that back pretty soon, you know, you only do that when it's very most, very necessary, but parasteam hydrotherapists, all the parasteam hydrotherapists here are trained to work with the client very actively um, over, you know, a certain amount of time, however long is necessary in order to be able to get those results. And so that's why, you know, um, Yes, uh, there are a lot of people who have endometriosis and have heard steaming is helpful for it. But if you just go to the spa every once in a while and you're not working with a parasteam hydrotherapist who's analyzing what's going on with your cycle, adjusting the herbs, adjusting the steam plan and making sure to get those results, you're not always going to have those results where your endometriosis 
these cases that the parasitic hydrotherapists have where it completely goes away, where, you know, you're able to cancel that surgery. But that's why I really wanted to highlight the parasitic hydrotherapists this year, because you, the results that you all get with people are insane. I mean, they're the things that have me going around being like steaming, so, you know, hysterectomies aren't needed anymore because we know how to steam, you know, and obviously this isn't just the steaming in the spa. These are highly trained practitioners who are able to do the steaming. Um, in this way. And I actually found the same in Korea. I, w I was recently able to visit Korea. And again, there are highly trained steam practitioners, you know, acupuncturists who specialize in steam, they're able to get these results, you know, but it's not the same as, as the just the steaming at the spa. And so it's, it's really important to be able to have this, this referral, you know, the spa is where people learn about steaming. People learn about steaming in the spa. They learn about it from their massage therapists. They learn about it from their estheticians, you know, and then when people have these issues, if they have any advanced issues, if they're up for surgery and they want to try a natural option, that's where if you can get them to one of these pair of steam hydrotherapists, that's the best chance that somebody is actually going to be able to use steaming thoroughly in order to be able to possibly, you know, um, resolve those advanced health issues. Thank you so much for sharing, Teresa. Okay, so I'm going to head over to Cynthia next. Cynthia, who's somebody that you really loved working with? Like, can you share one of your cases with us? I've shared this one before, but it was just so cool and so easy and so cool. Anyway, so this young woman came to me, she was 21, and she had gone to her gynecologist, a male gynecologist, and she had a bump on her vulva area. And so the doctor said that he thought she had a um, urethral caruncle, okay, which is, which is something that, what's sorry, did I say it right? Car oh, no, I just, sorry. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so car, which mostly doesn't happen um, in women that age, it would happen, you know, maybe postmenopausal, um, but also like that's like a really serious thing, and it just sh showed up for her. And she's twenty one, and it was she was, she was freaked out because the doctor said, "Oh, your only option is surgery." Of course, <clears throat> sorry, I'll maintain myself, but. So she, I don't know how she found me. I think she she went on Steaming Chicks practitioner site or sorry, uh, directory, found me. And then, you know, we talked. And so she just was explaining um, where it was, what it was. And yes, having the parasteam hydrotherapy background um, of really understanding the female anatomy, you know, in that area, I thought, oh, well, that's a periurethral cyst, you know, that's something that's just gotten caught and you probably could just steam a couple of times and you'd be good to go. It's just some, it's just some extra water that's there or extra something that needs to be drained. So she's like, okay, you know, let me try it. So she tried it and it was gone the next day. And so it was just so simple. She went, so then she went to another gynecologist, a female. Cynthia. And yeah, the next day next day yeah the next day so it was it was literally like and but I think what honestly <clears throat> there is an emotional component to this because there I was I was listening to her I was saying you know that's not a urethral car uncle like what you you know and I explained to her where the glands are I explained to her how you know easily you could just it could just be a little bit of something um liquid you know or whatever that's just uh, gotten stuck or you have you know just so it made her feel so relaxed that she actually says she thinks just relaxing about it and steaming once that's what took it away because she was so scared and she was like, I'm 21. This is affecting my self-esteem. And, you know, so, um, so then she did go to a, a second gynecologist just to second opinion. And she, and the gynecologist also said, yes, that was a periurethral cyst and it just drained, you know, so that one was just so amazing, like, because it was so fast and so she also just needed someone to hear, like what Teresa was saying, just deep listening of really what it was, you know, and then to give her just some calming, you know, like, it's okay, it's just this, and then it was, and it was, yeah, so that was, yeah. And, oh my gosh, and then, I'm sharing that one. I remember that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, but beyond that, I'll just say, um, a lot of, yeah, the deep listening, a lot, I see a lot of women with uterine fatigue 
And it's almost always, if you have a child, you have uterine fatigue, you know? I mean, it's just, to me, it seems like it's so, it just goes hand in hand. And I mean, yeah, obviously. Um, but so it's, I think a lot of time just, it's been awareness, like to raising a woman's awareness. And, and once they see, oh yeah, steaming, that's just one of my healthcare, that's one of my own self health things that I do, like brushing my teeth and, you know, all of those things. So once they can kind of, you know, reach that, then I feel like it gets um, a little bit easier to say, okay, no, I need this time. And it's not just this, right. Like you say, going to the spa, it's the, it doesn't have to be this elaborate thing. It's just, no, this is my 10 minutes that I know is going to help my body and I can make time for that basically. Wow. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Cynthia. And there, you know, the, 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 the difficult thing is that uh, just so everybody understands, all of the parasteam hydrotherapists, they go through an internship where they have to work with a client from every single one of the different health topics. So they all work with, you know, about 15 to 16 different case studies. And so I've heard all of them, <laughs> you know, I've heard, I've heard all of those ones and then they have other people that they've worked with since. So, um, so anyways, all of these, all of these parasteam hydrotherapists have so many, so many case studies. So it's interesting for me even just to hear which ones they mention. Um, but uh, just a lot of um, a lot of wins, like Teresa said, you know, a lot of wins working with steaming is just it's really easy. And you 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 get a bunch of best friends, you know, because people love you to death, <laughs> you know, and all you did was teach them how to steam. But, you you know, the steam changed their life, you know, and since you were instrumental in that, you know, again, you get that love from it, you know. Um, all right. So I will go to Chantal next. Chantal, will you share one of your case studies that really stands out? Sure. You know, some of them, the the impact is really qualitative. You know, when you work with someone who has pain and then they no longer have pain or someone who is incredibly moody and their family members notice like, wow, you're not a dragon anymore every month. Like, you know, I think it's really affirming when people can see, and that's literally one of my clients, her husband was like, you're not a dragon anymore uh, this time of the month, you know? Um, or someone else might, you know, especially when people are trying to conceive and they're having painful intercourse, it's it's so qualitative to see like, oh, wow, okay, they are restoring and repairing their relationship with pleasure and, you know, relieving pain and no longer having that kind of negative association. But I think um, probably one case that stands out, <laughs> this was probably my most negligent client. <laughs> Um, I'm good friends with her sister and basically her sister was kind of like you need to see Chantal and you need to steam because she had had uh, she previously had a surgery to remove an ovarian cyst and it was growing again the size of a grapefruit and they wanted to operate again and she's like no you need to do something about it so reluctantly with her big sister really strong arming her we were able to get the herbs to her and the supplies. And um, she went an entire year of, of really, um, you know, irregular steaming, just steaming when her sister reminded her to, when she felt like it. But it was the first case study I had where a doc, I saw the doctor's notes from the time she started and to a year later. So at one point, um, when they were recommending surgery, um, they shared the records with me that the cyst was 10 centimeters. And with her inconsistent steaming over the course of a year, it was down to two centimeters and they were no longer recommending surgery and she has not had surgery um, for this cyst as uh, to my knowledge. And so I think um, I'm always really impressed with the efficiency of steaming. I have a background in nursing and engineering. So I'm really, I have like a, real interest in things that are efficient <laughs> and things that like get you to from point A to point B in the quickest, most direct way possible. Mm -hmm. And I always tell Kelly steaming is so efficient because it's, it's such a quick way to get to a result that would take usually a lot of other work, right? Maybe some dietary changes, maybe some working through different emotional issues and lifestyle changes. But I feel like it gives people enough of a, a quick result that they're, it, they are motivated to like, oh, what else could happen if I put a little bit more effort or what else? It, it's just such a, I think it's a tide turner in a lot of ways. Um, so it's really reparative. So I would say that that was my, my first um, 
that's the first uh, time that I've actually seen medical records. I have clients who've told me like, oh, I had a cyst and you told me to steam and now the cyst is gone, but I've never seen the records myself. So that one stands out to me. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love it. You're a negligent client. And that's the interesting thing about it is like, uh, you know, I think we've all had clients like that. I mean, there's a lot of the case studies where it's just like she didn't steam. So I can't say we can't say whether or not she got the results or not, you know. Um, and I think that's part of why we need to highlight parasteam hydrotherapists and that what we are able to do when we have those clients that will just steam. And of course, there's other things we want them to do. We want them to work on their, you know, emotional health and we want them to work on their diets and all this kind of stuff. We give some little recommendations here and there. But at the end of the day, if you can just get this person steaming, you know, I really agree with you, Chantal. In fact, I mean, my company was chick food. I like, I like teas and eating. Like I like, I like healthy food plans and, and tea, you know, that's what I like in order to be able to deal with a lot of these issues, but the amount of work and changes that are necessary to do that are so much compared to um, if you can just get somebody to steam. And I think that's why steaming just always took off. You know, I mean, I was, I, I was always trying to do the herbs and the, and the food plans and, ultimately was the steaming that took off. And I think one of the reasons why is because you just see those results. The next time that period comes around, you see those results. It looks different and you know that there has been a change, you know? Um, so it yeah. Feels it feels good. I think the fact that it feels good, people are so accustomed to like something that helps you, you have to endure and push through and struggle and no pain, no gain. And that mantra is like, people are almost bracing themselves. Like it's, it has to hurt to work. Right. And it's like, no, if it's hurting, it doesn't work. Right. It, it doesn't, you're, you're not going to get to the healing if you're struggling and pushing and fighting and, and trying to like endure some difficulty. So I think that's the other thing people are almost, I'm also realizing that some people feel really offended that you would suggest something so simple can make a difference because they've been with this for so long and this pain has become such a part of them or their difficulty has been such a part of their identity. So I know some people are like, how, how could something that feels good and be so easy, do anything for me. Um, and so, so yeah, there's a lot of resistance there too. So, so that's the other thing. It feels good is a really great, <laughs> great part too. You said a lot right there. <laughs> you said a lot. Okay. But first of all, I like that you rhymed, you know, you said it has got to hurt to work. So then I want to say, good feelings for healing you know steaming is good feelings for healing you know like we, we, we can rhyme too you know <laughs> but like it oh my gosh you said a lot okay so we're gonna um, i'm just gonna be mindful of the time we are we are at an hour but i i'm going to um i didn't actually say when the end time was i don't think but we'll just go ahead and we are recording this anybody who needs to go that's fine but we are gonna just keep on talking to our parasteam hydrotherapists and hearing these awesome case studies um Okay, so, and then anybody who needs to leave out of my parasteam hydrotherapist, just raise your hand so that you can go um, next. We, um, I have you on the list next, Melissa. If you wanted to share one of your case studies, we would love to hear. It's so great to hear these. I love this. And of course, I've got all these different case studies popping into my mind, and there's three that uh, you've come to me after surgery, and the surgery didn't take care of it. Um, and, and so then there's that discouragement, right? And hearing the stories. And uh, I guess one I can share with you today was from my early years. So I, I hadn't gone through the whole program yet, but um, said, oh, I need an infection client. And, and uh, this person got referred to me. She had one of the really uh, aggressive strains of HPV that can lead to cervical cancer eventually. And, uh, she had just gotten the LEAP procedure. She was at the highest level of cervical dysplasia before cancer. So it's precancerous, but when the, the medical professional starts saying the C word, cancer, it's very scary. And, um, and so um, that somebody said, oh, Melissa can teach you about steaming. Why don't you try that? And uh, she'd already had the LEAP procedure. And unfortunately, they found that it didn't get it all. There was not clean margins. It had 
gone beyond the cervix and up into the uterus. And she tried, you know, the OBGYN. She went to a GYN oncologist. She went to a naturopathic doctor. And all of them were saying, you know, I think you just need to get a hysterectomy at this point. And she'd already had her children. So, you know, in her 40s, why not? But there was something in her just saying, well, maybe there's something else I can try. I don't know if I really want to go that route again. If I need to, I will. But so I was kind of new to this and said, well, let's try it. <laughs> What's to lose, you know, your, your uterus, but but that's not the end of the world. Right. And let, let's just experiment. And um, and she was prone to short cycles. So we had to do, you know, short 10 minute steams with the gentle herbs. But it was basically like, okay, can we just have you steam every day you're not bleeding? let's just try that. And I got her set up with that. She ended up then like really getting into the practice and buying her own steam stool with the fun shape that she liked. And then we noticed itching. I was like, oh no, itching. It's okay. Soak. Steam then soak. And bless her soul. She, she did a lot of work. I mean, this was like pretty much daily steaming, steaming and soaking. She found a way to like do this and just fit it into her life. And and then she went hiking on a hot day and had a spontaneous bleed. And it was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> maybe there's too much steaming going on for someone with uterine fatigue. So let's back it off, get the bleeding stopped. Okay, let's start steaming again. So this went on for about three months. And then she went back in and got checked and it was all gone. Like no more cervical dysplasia, the whole HPV, I forget exactly which strain it won, but it was one of the scary aggressive ones. I mean, it's gone, totally clear. And I thought, wow, <laughs> okay, that, that kind of made me a believer. And I, I will say she she gets the credit for showing up and doing that work. She yeah. was already eating healthy, but you know, she was finding pills to take and um, you know, clean up her diet even more. And 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 so, you know, I think there was a lot of things, but but it can be so discouraging when you face people, even in the natural health community who, who don't have faith that this can heal and just trying it. And I think the steaming was relaxing and encouraging enough that she could then put more energy into finding whatever else she needed to try. But it's um, exciting. And one other interesting thing about this case is she had one of those soft contraindications of the Esher and, um, for birth control in the tubes. And so the steaming could potentially <laughs> reverse that. And so that was a situation too, where it's like, oh, well, maybe you're not a good candidate for steaming, but maybe you are if you can do something else for birth control, right? And really this is your choice to make. What do you want to do? And in the end, she's like, well, I didn't really like that Isha anyway. I'd kind of like to get out. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to um, ever know if the Esher came out or not, because I don't think she's going to go get the testing to figure that out, but um, still happy, healthy with a uterus today. So that was super exciting. Wow, Melissa. And, you know, one thing that I think probably everybody sees right now is Melissa is so good with details. And, you know, what? I remember I remember when you were working with this client and it was scary, you know, like this is these are not my favorite clients, like the bleeding clients are not my favorite, you know. And for everybody else listening, for everybody who has a spa and it's just like, did she just say steam every day? Well, let me do that with my HPV clients. Please don't. Please don't. OK. Um, you have to know that what the risk of steaming daily is, is bleeding. And so when we are working with somebody and we first we determine whether or not it's safe for them to steam every day. Usually we don't even start every day. We might start every third day or every other day. And then there's a trial period to see if it's safe after two or three steam sessions, right? Um, these are how parasteam hydrotherapists are trained to work with clients. And then not only, we're also able to screen to see when there's a potential that they might have bleeding issues. And then the other thing is that we're trained to work to stop the bleeding when it does start, because it does. Like with this client, it did start. <laughs> I remember that hike, she went hiking. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and Melissa was able to work with her. And that is really important because when somebody has, and it's prone to heavy bleeding and then they, they start, 
bleeding like that, whether or not steam was the, the reason, I mean, st steam isn't the reason why usually, it's usually because they're overactivity. But you realize that what, ha what happens is people can go into the hospital because of heavy bleeding and come out without a uterus. One of the things that happens if somebody goes to the hospital because of heavy bleeding is a hysterectomy just to get the bleeding to stop. One of the things that can happen is a hysterectomy. So it's really these parasteam hydrotherapists are highly trained, you know, working with, with these clients um, and monitoring them very closely. Um, and yeah, that client was, whoo, she was a roller coaster. You know, there was a lot of things going on. And then the fact that she was able to get those results at the end, that you were able to guide her to that it was just really incredible. I'm so grateful. I was so, so grateful, especially with, with all of those bleeding issues that she had. Oh my gosh. Wow. Thank you for sharing that case study. Um, and I really like how you guys are all filling these in like different ones, you know? So now we're getting like a full rainbow picture because I just want everybody here to understand that every single one of the STEAM therapists has worked with clients in these different areas as well. Um, just really, this is just a really tremendous, tremendous group. Um, oh my gosh, JC Clarkson says, I am one of Teresa's clients and she is so fabulous. I so agree that this practice goes beyond the physical and hits on so many levels, especially the emotional realm and healing my relationship to my womb. This is definitely directly related to Teresa's presence and ability to deeply listen and hold space for my stories. Thanks so much for sharing that, JC. Um, I also appreciate the deeply rooted knowledge and anatomy and physiology of the parasteam hydrotherapist. I am one of those negligent clients. It has taken me over a year to actually incorporate steaming into my life in an easeful and accessible way. It is interesting to reflect on this and see now it aligns with my own journey of detaching my identity from my period pain. Um, wow, very cool. And there's, there's even more. So you guys come and read this. Um, thank you so much for sharing, JC. Okay, so let's move on to Natalie in the Ukraine. Um, I would love if, if you could share about one of your uh, clients that stood out. Actually, I can share it with you only one, but I will do it with Two, but where okay. is <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> as, as it was a, a question about endometriosis in the chat, I will uh, link to this issue because I had a client who had endometriosis for 15 years and it was a really bad ma uh, menses. It was menstruation with a, a lot of pain, a lot of clots and actually this woman uh, used uh, painkillers and so powerful that uh, it was the the closest to the uh, prescribed by receipt, you know, this kind of drugs <laughs> and uh, she tried uh, steaming and for the first period uh, she was surprised that she didn't, didn't need uh, such a powerful painkiller and she dropped to the uh, I don't know the, the name of this but that one they, uh, that used with uh, head pain mm -hmm. with head itches. and she was surprised that it, it was enough for the next uh, period she uh, <laughs> had another one surprise as she forgot about painkillers and uh, she remembered about it after period ends. And she said, oh, I didn't visit uh, pharmaceutical. I didn't visit drugstore. And I even forgot to wear uh, pills in my house. <laughs> and, and, and I just realized that I didn't need any painkillers this time. Uh, but she had irregularity with the steaming she left for a few months so uh after I believe 16 or 18 months uh, her endometriosis gone but previously she was diagnosed uh, as she had uh, endometriosis in uterus walls on uh stomach area i believe it was me kidneys i don't remember uh, ovaries and 
and after uh, steaming she uh, visited doctor and there is no endometriosis anywhere in her what body. yes yes and she had standard healthy cycle and she told me i never heard such i never had such short cycles such clear blood such no pain no some uh, heavy bleedings during period and so on so on she was amazed by it whoa <laughs> totally whoa effect for her and um the second uh, case is uh, um Akila mentioned that she's supporting women uh, with pregnancy loss it's also my area of support and uh, yeah I, I totally agree that uh, women are lonely in these cases and uh, everything that uh, um, doctors offer them is just oh, we have this term you know clean cleaning the uterus uh, but actually it's DNC procedure so uh, a few days ago one woman um, write, wrote me a message and uh, she said that a year ago she had a pregnancy loss and I supported her in this period in this uh, few days she had uh, this loss missing pregnancy loss then she started to steam and then uh, he uh, she, she had a miscarriage so she asked me uh, is it possible to uh, uh, oh, I've got the English word for this uh, to mention me uh, in her reels on Instagram as she is uh, making a serial uh, few reels to uh, share her story about mm. pregnancy loss as a anniversary of uh, her she believed it it was son and she said uh, my, my son is gone so I want to share this story and I want to uh, tell people about your support and about uh, power of steaming uh, in this case and uh, to ju just to inform people that there is alternative uh, to medical interventions mm -hmm. and it was so touchful for me that she remember and she asked my permission and and i i was speechless <laughs> for, for a few minutes as i told her it's it's totally her story it's totally uh confidential uh between us uh, that i i don't share these stories uh, in public but if she wants to speak about it it will be helpful and i'm sure that um this uh that women we, women deserve to know about this approach and uh actually i mm, this kind of clients i uh support uh, as my service you know as my um free of charge services i know it's it's so important and it's uh, it's so tender for for women and it's it's really for me it's not about money it's not about mm, business it's about to be with women in her process so It's uh, short stories about case studies. 
Wow, thank you so much, Natalie. And honestly, uh, just for everybody listening, a lot of the case studies, especially at first, that all of the steam therapists do, um, they do they offer free of free of charge. Um, sadly, people don't enough people don't know about pair steam hydrotherapists um, to be willing to pay, you know, a decent consultation fee. People don't know what we can do. <laughs> but when you think about the results that you know, that we've heard in these case studies alone, you know, a uh, $120 consultation fee, at least that's what I recommend in the United States is, I mean, that's the same cost of a massage. It's cheaper than getting your hair done, you know, and the life transformation that it has is insane, you know, compared to uh, those other things. And um, anyways, thank you all so much to all of you for offering your services. I think especially in the beginning, a lot of us do it just because it's like we're telling somebody who's going through a pregnancy loss, Steamy can help you. And there's no way that they're going to book a consultation. So we just help them, <laughs> you know. And um, and then uh, it is helpful to have those case studies, you know, and to know ourselves also what Steamy can do, you know. So there's a certain amount of that that is getting that experience, which is why, you know, the 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 program has that internship pro, um, period so that the Parasteam hydrotherapists can work with enough clients to have case studies and and usually that is you know entirely free of charge well natalie thank you so much for your two stories and she, again each one of you has so many really great case studies so i was you know i hadn't heard that second one i thought you were going to a different one with that but um but i just encourage everybody to follow these steam therapists um, it, so several of them have blogs, you know, and they share about these case studies sometimes online, just anonymously. Um, some of this stuff is really, really incredible. These are, you know, I think for me, they fall into a category of medical miracles simply because um, most of the world doesn't know what steaming can do. And um, I think this is, to me, this is the learning lab for what steaming can do, you know, just some of these really, really incredible case studies. Okay, so I will go to um, Akila now um, to share one of your case studies. So the case study that I want to share is um, I heard from a woman who contacted me and she made an appointment to come in and I didn't know what we were going to talk about, but when she got there, she told me that uh, it was, I want to, I want to say that um, we met in November of that year. And she told me she'd been pregnant three times that year. Um, each one had resulted in a miscarriage. So she had fallen, what I call fallen victim to the medical advice that as soon as you have a miscarriage, it's a good time to try to get pregnant again because your hormones are really high. And um, so that's what she had done. And each time she'd had a miscarriage. So the last one, um, she had a DNC afterwards and her period never came back. And so she went to her gynecologist and um, said, you know, I haven't had my period in, in three months. This was in November. She said, I haven't had my period in three months and I'm trying to get pregnant. And the doctor's response was, um, no, she said, I'm only getting my period for one day every month. And the doctor's response was, well, my period only comes one day a month too. So that's normal. And so she was like, okay. So she left and she called, she looked me, looked up online, I guess. And she found me somehow and asked if I could help her. You know, she wanted to book an appointment. So she came in and told me this story. And um, I really became interested even more because one of the pregnancies, I think was the first one was an ectopic pregnancy, which I had suffered with myself when I was younger. And I knew, I really believe that steaming can help with um, blocked fallopian tubes. So anyway, long story short, she um, came to me. I told her the plan that I wanted her to start on, which included abstinence. Um, not having sexual intercourse um, to start her on this plan to achieve this, the standard healthy cycle, which she also did not have prior to any of the pregnancies. 
And then once she got to that, cause she stuck to her plan. She was really, she was not negligent. <laughs> she stuck to it cause she really wanted to have a baby. She also was approaching 40 and was sort of, you know felt like she was on the, under the clock to get pregnant. So she followed the plan, um, didn't have intercourse at all. And a few months later, every month I was you know, monitoring her, her um, progress. And a few months later, she had achieved the st standard healthy um, cycle. And so I started her on the fertility plan. She only was on the fertility plan about two months and got pregnant and had a very healthy pregnancy, full term birth, full term pregnancy and wonderful birth. So um, it was a real success. And, and I was grateful to help her get off of that cycle of miscarrying and miscarrying and miscarrying. Um, I always think about something that you said once, Kelly, which I think it's in the course, in one of the courses where you said, the goal is not to get pregnant. The goal is to have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby and mom at the end of it. So I always, I live by that. And I explain that to clients, you know, but who are really worried about, you know, am I running out of time to get pregnant? I'm 40, I'm 38. Um, one of my stories that I tell clients is that my, one of my last doula clients when I work, worked with in the hospital was 47 when she came to me and it was her first pregnancy She'd never been pregnant before. And she had a wonderful pregnancy. She did all the things to, you know, keep herself healthy. She steamed in late at the, in the last trimester with my support, had a very wonderful pregnancy, a healthy baby at full term, you know, even though, and, and her first very, she told me her very first appointment when she went to the doctor, they're like, oh, you're having a geriatric pregnancy. And she said, don't ever use that word with me again. I don't want to hear that terminology. Do not say that to me and inform all of your staff to never talk to me like that. So she went into pregnancy with a really positive mindset and had a very healthy baby who just celebrated his um, fifth birthday last week. So I was her doula at the time and um, she did all the things, including steaming and recovered really, really well at 47 from her first and only birth. So I use that story a lot to encourage my clients, no matter how old you are, you know, if your uterus is healthy, if your cycle is healthy and you want to have a baby, you can. There's nothing stopping you. And, and you know, just push all that negative commentary out of the way. Wow. So now I hope the whole world sees what a treasure you all are. Uh, Parasteam hydrotherapists are incredible. Uh, we use steaming primarily primarily as the method of um, tackling some of these, I don't want to say treating, and I don't want to say, uh, you know, healing, but we use steaming primarily as the method of balancing out um, these advanced, um, advanced, um, what do I call them, advanced issues. So, um, so, wow, you guys, thank you so much. Um, so we should conclude. I did want to give a shout out to Angela again, who is in her final case study before she graduates. She is not in Germany. My apologies for saying that. Uh, I'm like uh, the American stereotype doesn't know geography very well. <laughs> Such a bad mistake. Anyways, she's in Switzerland. Um, uh, but Diana is in Germany, right, Diana? Diana is in Germany. <laughs> so... Um, um, but anyhow, so I asked Angela um, if she wanted to share anything and she's sharing in the chat. I would like to share my own story because it was a gift to me. I had an infection this summer vacation, something I haven't had in at least 20 years. I had dry mucous membranes, redness, slight itching, and above all, a very swollen labia. Right at home, I have a mild, I had a mild steam session with disinfectant in the um, in the morning and evening. Um, made in autumn, the warmth and humidity felt so good. After three days, it was all over. If I had gone to the gynecologist, I would have 100% been given antibiotics. Yes. So, um, you know, it's just a nice, uh, you know, and that's what I, steaming is, isn't always, it, it's not always a replacement for, um, you know, what a doctor can do, but just kind of like in the same way that somebody might have a cold and, 
you know, they might take, you know, have some chicken soup or some tea at home or some lemon or some honey. That's something that they might try before they go to the doctor. A lot of times when it comes to gynecological issues, that's how steaming is. Steaming is something that's a home remedy that can be, um, that can be used even while you're waiting for your doctor's appointment, you know, and that often can get the results. I mean, when you think about Cynthia's client that, you know, in one day her cyst was gone. I mean, come on, you know, like, I mean, it, who knows? Like, let's try it. You know, it's just one of those home remedies that I do think um, really just needs to be returned into just the regular knowledge and practice that women have, because there's a lot of needless suffering. It's kind of how I feel about a lot of this stuff, <laughs> you know? Um, so we'll go around just one more time, and if you all will just say how people can find you. So what your the best way to book a consultation with you is, um, please just go ahead and leave that. So we'll go backwards now. Um, Akila. Hi, the best way to reach me is through my website, which is um, qitowellness.com slash Akila, my name, and I just put it in the chat. Um, you can also call me on the STEAM hotline at 503-506-0168. Um, and the hotline is available Monday through actually every day of the week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific time. I'll put the number in there. And that's a U.S. number, or you can reach me on Instagram. I mean, excuse me, on, um, or on Instagram or on WhatsApp um, as well. Thanks so much, Akila. Um, Angela, go ahead and drop yours in the chat, and I'll mention that. Um, Natalie, how do people reach you? And um, by the way, Akila does virtual consultations. Um, in fact, everybody here does. So I know some of you might be thinking, oh, I wish I was in that person's country or in their state. It doesn't matter. Everybody here does virtual consultations because there's so few of us in the world. We have to. Um, Natalie is uh, the best way she said to reach her is at as on Instagram at the Queen's Care. Um, Angela, the best way to reach her is on her website, which is um, OK. Na nature hail rate. Okay, I'm gonna have to spell it out. Hold on. It is N A T U R H E I L R A U M dash Casanova C A S A N O V A dot C H. Um, and then um, Melissa, how can people find you? I just put my website on my name. And it's melissafhunter.com, and that redirects to a booking site. And I'm also on the Steamy Chick Practitioner Directory in the wonderful. middle of California. Yes. Okay, wonderful. And then, Cynthia, how can people get in contact with you? Yeah. So, um, yeah, just my, my website, um, ubercorner.org. Or, or it could also be on Instagram. I'll put that too. Um, get ready for the queen. Steam like a queen. <laughs> no, on Instagram, what, what are you? You're, um, no, you're Atticus. That's Show my this. Bluebird Corner. So I, I don't I have two. Yes. Uh, Bluebird Corner is my, like my personal artist one. And then Steam like a queen is my steaming one. So I did just put that in the chat, so. See, I also just want to give every woman a crown. I just, anyway, I just, I just think everyone should have a crown all the time. I brought my So Cynthia, Cynthia Reyna, her last name is Queen. And that is, that's her, and that's her business, Steam Like a Queen. And she teaches everybody to have that sovereignty over themselves. Um, steaming is able to give people that sovereignty over their health it's really beautiful and the last time that i saw cynthia she crowned me which was the first and only time in my life that has ever happened it was such an honor it really is something very special that um <laughs> that you do okay and then chantal left but she is at um honoredwomb.com h-o-n-o-r-e-d-w-o-m 
B.com. And then um, we have Teresa. <laughs> Teresa, you're on mute. But you're shining. <laughs> you just beat me every time. I just love this. And then you see the yellow behind you. Like, you're just like a sunshine. Like, beaming in sunshine every time. It's the best. Thanks. Yeah, so you can see, you reach me on my website. It's luminouscreatrix.com. Or on Instagram, at luminouscreatrix. So that's with an X. Um, or on the uh, Jimmy Chick directory. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Teresa. You guys are all the best. And just so everybody knows to simplify it, um, the Steamy Chick directory has a way to um, filter for Parasteam Hydrotherapists. You just click on Parasteam Hydrotherapists and you can find all of these wonderful um, practitioners. And um, also if you want to refer anybody, especially for example, if you're one of the facilitators or you have a spa and you're hearing this and you wanna be able to refer to a steam therapist, you all are the ones that are able to know, you know, and hear about somebody's endometriosis or fibroids or HPV first, you know, the spa, the, the, those that are steaming at the spa, this, um, this, this, sorry, the spa steam providers. Um, and then if you wanna be able to refer your clients to these, um, uh, parasteam hydrotherapist. And if you want to keep it simple, you can always just go to steamychick.com backslash consultation, where I have all of the parasteam hydrotherapists listed as well. All right, you guys, this has been so wonderful. I can't believe we've taken this long to have this type of a panel, but clearly this is not going to be the last time. We need to have so much more of this. These stories are just so incredible. And I really love all of you all so much, <laughs> so dearly. And, um, and I look forward to the next time that we're going to do this. This was recorded and I will send this recording out and make it available to everybody. All right. Ciao.